is this, another game-changing, affordable, little amplifier. Today, we're talking about the Dayton Audio DTA 100 ST. It's a $135 two-channel amplifier, so sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this Dayton Audio amplifier. If you're just finding the channel, please subscribe to the channel. We have over 750 videos, amps, turntables, DACs, just about everything you could be interested in when it comes to audio. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me if you would subscribe and like this video. Please donate your subscription today. If you are not familiar with Dayton Audio, it is Parts Express's internal speaker brand, amplifier brand, streamer brand. Parts Express is an awesome place if you're into building speakers or anything really DIY audio. I was a Parts Express customer a long time before I ever even thought about starting a YouTube channel. Almost all of my speakers that I have built have got parts from Parts Express in them. Even if it's a kit from another manufacturer, because a lot of times I'll get speaker binding posts or other products from Parts Express to put into that build because I like the parts from Parts Express better. There are a ton of Dayton Audio products on their website. So they've been around for a while. Let's talk about some specs. The website is fairly nebulous when it comes to what the specifications are. It only tells us the power RMS channel at 8 ohms is 51 to 100 watts. No 4 ohm rating, no 8 ohm rating. However, I reached out to them and did get a 4 ohm and 8 ohm rating. Max usable power is between 57.7 watts RMS and 69.6 watts RMS at 0.43% THD into a 4 ohm rating. For 8 ohms, it is half of that. So about 28 to 35 watts RMS into 8 ohms. Comes with an internal power supply, so the only thing you have to do is connect an included figure eight cord to this thing. No wall warts. No having to change out and get a different power supply if you want more juice. Build quality of the Dayton Audio DTA 100 ST is really, really good. You can see the brushed aluminum front plate, and this thing is a lot heftier than other Class D amplifiers that I have in the house. On the side, you have some very nice ventilation holes. I don't know why though, because this thing <laughs> never really got hot at all, even when I was pushing it. On the front, you only have three things. You have a power button, you have an input selector right here, either line in or Bluetooth, and then you have a very nice stepped volume knob in kind of a bead blasted or matte gray finish. What's on the back? This is where things get pretty interesting about this product. On the back, you have Bluetooth antenna right there. You have a line in and a line out, so this can be used as a preamp. And then right here, you have a variable high pass filter that can be defeated with this little switch right here. Then you have some very nice speaker binding posts. Then you have the power connection right here and a power toggle, master power toggle right here. The usages for this little device just got very interesting because now we can talk about a 2.1 system, which means putting a high pass filter on a pair of speakers, bookshelf or tower speakers. High pass filter just blocks the lower signals from them. Most of the power that it takes to drive a speaker comes from Big bass hits, so if you're mitigating the amount of low bass frequencies that you're sending to your speaker, and you can play them louder with lower distortion. A high pass filter in a two channel setup is brilliant. There are more and more small amplifiers that are putting a high pass filter in their products, and it is great. On the bottom, you have more ventilation holes and some rubber feet. This thing is built very well, probably the best built amplifier I've had in here under $150. There's other amplifiers like the Fozzy Audio V3 that are built good, but the Dayton Audio, a little bit better. Let's talk about how it sounds. So stick around till the end. I'm gonna talk about my final thoughts on this, but the partnering equipment that I had with the Dayton Audio DTA 100 ST was the Weem Pro. I was running the line out from the Weem Pro 
into the Dayton Audio and then I had the Emotiva B2 Plus hooked up to it. It's a pretty difficult to drive speaker. It's four ohms and 86 dB sensitivity. That means it takes more juice to get that speaker up and going. I compared this directly to the Fozzy Audio V3 with a 48 volt 5 amp power supply, which on paper should put out a lot more power than the Dayton Audio. I also had this hooked up in my living room for the last couple of weeks running center channel duties. I had this speaker hooked up to it. It's the RSL CG3M, their little bookshelf speaker. On the back, there's a keyhole mount. So I have this mounted on my wall running center channel duties via the Schkit Sin surround sound little processor that they have. It's a perfect addition to the Schkit Sin because it has the high pass filter. The Sin does not have any filtering on it whatsoever. Most powered subwoofers, if not all powered subwoofers, have an integrated low pass filter on them. So you can block out all the high frequencies on a subwoofer already just because of the way it's designed. However, most smaller amplifiers that you would be using with the Schitt Sin don't have a high pass filter. So I was very excited that this has a high pass filter. This speaker is eight ohms, a lot easier to drive than the Emotiva B2 Plus. I would say the sound signature when watching movies is very mid-range focused, which is good because you get a lot of clarity in vocals. This thing had plenty of juice on tap when I was running it in a home theater situation or TV situation. For music, the overall tonality of this amplifier is a little bit thin through the bottom, which isn't surprising. They did not disclose what type of amp chipset that they are using inside the DTA 100 ST. They're a little bit clandestine about it. But it sounds very similar to a lot of the Class D amplifiers I've had in that have Infineon M2070 chipsets utilizing a whole bunch of amplifiers. Top end had a tendency to be a little bit bitey with cymbals. Percussion, initial attacks were a little bit mm, in your face. However, the bottom end was super clean, super articulate, and very fast. Soundstage is, I don't know, typical. Not super huge. Imaging things are placed in space pretty well. Let's talk about how it compares to the Fozzy Audio V3. The Fozzy Audio V3 is another amplifier that has no tone controls, has one analog input, and depending upon the power supply can put out almost three times as much power as the Dayton Audio. Was that the experience that I had? Wait till the final thoughts to find out. I hooked both these up to a Weem Pro. I linked the Weem Pros so that they were playing simultaneously and I used the line level output or the internal DAC of both Weem Pros going into both products. So I could quickly switch them with the Duke Audio Little Bear VU3 speaker and amp switcher to get a better idea how they compare to each other. I level match them by ear, which isn't perfect, it's not the best way to level match, but that's the only way that I, well, level match these. The Faith No More cover of War Pigs. After the four minutes, 16 second mark, there is a lot of just vocals and hi-hat. The V3 has slightly more reverb in the vocals. The vibrato just hung out in the air ever so slightly longer with the V3. Cymbals, again, with the hi-hat, Seemed a little bit more organic, a little bit more believable. The timber, I guess, was more natural on the V3 versus the Dayton Audio. Dayton Audio, a little bit spicy, but in a vacuum, you're not really gonna hear that. I hear it because I'm quickly A-being products and I've got, well, quite a bit of experience at this point. But when directly compared to the V3, the V3 does a better job on the top end and with vocals. Rooster by Alice in Chains off the MTV Unplugged record. Again, Lane Staley's voice was a little bit more clearly defined, more organic, and placed in space better with the V3 versus the Dayton Audio. Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. This is the bass track that I like to listen to. But we can't talk about that because now we need to talk about what are my final thoughts? Final thoughts on the Dayton Audio DTA 100 ST. I think this is a wonderfully built product. I think it's a wonderfully versatile product with the high pass filter. I think it sounds good, if not excellent, when compared to what I would consider to be the best low cost amplifier only product in the V3 from Fozzy Audio. It's not as good, but neither is anything else. 
The V3 really sets the bar for sub $100 amplifiers from a power perspective, sonic perspective, and a soundstage and imaging perspective. Here's where the Dayton Audio fell down a little bit high power applications. When I turned Intergalactic on, I was trying to run these about 80 dB and I was listening to them in the near field. So I'm only about three foot away from the speaker. So 80 dB on paper should be less than one watt if I'm doing my math correctly. However, the Dayton audio just couldn't handle it. It started to get distortion almost immediately. And even when I turned down the volume, it still kept that distortion. And as far as the volume goes, when I'm turning this, there can be pretty significant jumps. And this is a stepped volume, which means there's a little tiny detents that you can feel when you're turning it up and down. I didn't feel like it was really consistent. Sometimes when I do it once, there wouldn't be hardly any change in volume. And if I do it another time, there'd be a big jump up. So it was a little bit more difficult to level match with the V3. But what happened with Intergalactic is it started distorting. And even when I turned it down, it kept distorting. So what I have to do is change the tracks and kind of let this thing breathe a little bit, which tells me that this thing may be lacking a little bit on the current side. And I thought maybe it was the speaker switcher. So I hooked up the speakers directly to the Dayton Audio. Still the same problem. It really did not like Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. So then I played Rooster by Alice in Chains and really pumped it up too. Again, it started to have issues in the middle part of the song when everything starts to come together because the first half of that song is just kind of like individual layers of that song. Everything comes together in the middle and when it came together, the Dayton Audio just couldn't keep up. I think at lower volumes, this is great. It sounds good, it's built well, it has a whole bunch of functionality with a high pass filter, but it is not gonna push tough loads. An eight ohm speaker, 89 dB sensitivity, something like the RSL CG3M, it's gonna do just fine with. So if you're getting the Dayton Audio, which is a good product, just be careful what speakers you're trying to pair with it and keep in mind, have reasonable expectations of what power levels you're gonna be able to get out of this thing. I think it's a good product. I think if you have hard to drive speakers, you should probably look elsewhere. I'm very excited that more products are integrating high pass filters. It doesn't surprise me that Dayton Audio came out with this. I think the Dayton Audio sets the standard for build quality, but I wish there was a little bit more juice on tap for harder to drive speakers. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man, patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can use the links in the description. Most of those are, are affiliate links, which means if you click and buy, I get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more though. So it's a great way to support the channel. You can also buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Click on it, give me a couple of bucks, buy me a cup of coffee, put a little money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to tip me or buy me anything. Finally, you can sign up for Amazon, Title or Rune. Links in the description. Click, sign up. Even if you quit, I get a couple of bucks. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen. You can also buy a coffee mug. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.